Minnesota Original is made possible by the State Arts and Cultural Heritage Fund and the citizens of Minnesota. On this edition of Minnesota Original, Yugoslavian-born Zoran Masilov makes large-scale sculptures out of stone, steel, and wood. Lisa Nankaville builds intricate layers of color and texture to create her luminous oil paintings. Machinery Hill's world music is influenced by many genres, including ska, Celtic, and klezmer. These artists and more, now on Minnesota Original. arrived here they can jump over this too so we're gonna jump these curves drive all the way there then hopefully everything fits because I don't use tape measure so if I speak Serbian you guys have to translate one two three I forgot to tell you I didn't plan this part going straight to jacuzzi after this Ella! Welcome to my sculpture park, and today it's a two for one. Gee, it's a stiff from the from the cold. The people often people call this number, and I said hello, and they said, "Oh my God, this is working." They said, "Yeah," and it's even I sold some work through this uh, primitive advertising. It's gonna be dusty. I usually swear if I get too them concentrate to not swear then it's interview it's totally you know but this way Kate said oh we'll beep you out so what do you think I think you should try not to yeah okay I swear like this I am Zoran Moisil I'm sculptor People ask me what kind of sculptor. There are no wood sculptor versus stone sculptor. You're a sculptor working with the space and the material. So I'm sculptor with any materials what touch. So that would be me. I was born in Belgrade in Yugoslavia. Now it's Serbia always worked with the wood as a kid, you know. And then just slightly starting, people start to appreciate it. First my colleagues making swords and uh, knives and all these violent tools. And then later I started doing wrestling, Greco-Roman style. Then I made it the trophy of the two wrestlers. I saw my coach was the first in the Europe, champion of the Europe, and I said, hmm, I'm gonna make Zoran Moisilov, champion of the world, and I carve out of the wood. It's my ego was big even as a kid, so. I have to include humans in my work because that's who I am and who we are. So it's about humans and nature and that relationship. So sometimes uh, humans in the nature, sometimes humans in the city, sometimes humans in the war, in love, in the... Pretty much every day what I'm doing, that's my inspiration. And I'm 24 hours open to any suggestions of whatever nature thrown me as uh, not working hard, I would take it, you know. I said to young artists, watch what you wish to yourself because the, my, the wish might come true because the, look at what happened to me. I am the, for life in prison and I'm innocent, so. Breaking stones, it's not the fun, but I still having somehow fun, even on this cold day. I see these hard materials like wood, stone and this, I like to kind of challenge them physically 
not for too long. Everybody said my back and this and that is giving up. It was about 18,000 pounds when he came here. Now it's more like 12 or 10. Put him on diet, so he's like, he lost lots of weight. So it's more like kind of still being some little bully in the alley and pushing this materialist around and like, uh, and they push me back. Granite, definitely, granite is tough to, to bully granite, it's not that fun. So if you look inside, you can see the line in the stone, you know? And then I try to follow sometimes this line because this stone has a black and red, you know, it's called rainbow from the Morton, Minnesota. It's some kind of play. More play than really thinking about is it hard or not. When you play and it's game, you are part of it. You don't know even if, if you're hurting or not, or it's hard, or it's, you just keep playing and then people come and write you check for that. So what more you can have it? It's America. I start doing uh, work for a restaurant, the uh, Gardens of Salonika, uh, and it was more like, uh, they would say we need coat trick, I would make them coat trick. We need fountain, I'll make fountain. We are, and they start going like this little by little and then slowly the outer pieces, they like some of my outer pieces, they become part from outside or inviting people in. And now it's like little museum of my work. And this is uh, my boss, <laughs> Mama Anna. Uh -oh. She's uh, she is the involved with all this good cooking, so I cannot be a starving artist because of her. Yes, I mean, we work very hard. Yeah. This piece you cannot touch with the fingers, only with the feet. Originally with this came like some big brass, kind of really kind of cowboy style, the, but then Lazarus said it's ugly. He wanted something more ugly, Balkan way ugly, you know? Maybe some people, they don't like Greek food and some people, they don't like uh, my art, but that doesn't mean it's good or bad. It's just their taste. My favorite is charcoal on paper, you know, so it's really kind of very primitive. Then there are no secrets. As I like anything in my work, you can see the chisel marks, you can see my fingerprints, you can see, you don't have to ask me how it's anything made. You just look and you can, all is there. That's why the drawing I don't make exactly as a blueprint for the sculpture. I make them as idea for the sculpture but then halfway through, I turn them into the drawing also by itself. So it doesn't, if it's idea and the drawing it's close enough, doesn't need to be blueprints of what I want to make it, so. This is the hanging, uh, what I have already here. And then I'm gonna exaggerate the natural cracks with the chainsaw, all of them. And then I'm gonna patch it up with this railroad things, what I found in the back of the building, you know? Maybe this way it's even better. So there would be like a patches closing this wound as we all have some dragging some wound in our lives. I like it. Let's try again. Yes! <laughs> I think like this. Zato smo ovdje došli da se zezamo malo. Next spring I gonna come back and do the touch-ups, you know. It's good. Because it's made in USA. Look at this. My yoga teacher gonna be happy. It's, I think it's gonna be here. I'm estimating 200 years. After this, sue me if some problems are with this thing.
are at the corner of 15th Avenue and East Lake Street. This space, I like to think of it as a lighthouse on Lake Street. I think the amount of energy and community energy that has come through here and the incredible heart and soul of people working together, bringing lots of light here at this corner. I'm Sandy Spieler. I'm an artist. I've been working with In the Heart of the Beast Puppet and Mask Theater for over 35 years. I started out as a puppeteer, and then I became the artistic director. And I try to use my art to bring people together. Sometimes that means through theater arts, my puppetry, and sometimes it's through visual art and events. I would think we're best known for May Day. <laughs> big community dialogue, a big community celebration. It is a way for us to come out of our houses at the end of winter and see each other again. So thousands of people come together reminding us that we are a community and we are here inextricably bound together. So in this room, we have a lot of the larger puppets that have been made for various things. We don't save everything, even though it looks like we might. But some of the things that we know that we might use again, or some things that we didn't know we'd use again, but we tend to use a lot, uh, live in this warehouse. These are big angel puppets. And they're actually for the Minnesota Orchestra, the version of Hansel and Gretel. These are some of the puppets from a performance that we've done at Christmas time called La Natividad. So right at the millennium, we were invited to go to Korea. We performed for a 24-hour event that was put there right at the DMZ zone, calling for the reunification of the two Koreas. We were very honored to be a part of it. I've made a lot of animal puppets over the years, and the ones that I like to dwell on the most are the ones that are very native to Minnesota. This beautiful wolf puppet and deer. So when we talk about the community, we're not just talking about the human community, but we're talking about the community of all this life that's affected by everything that's happening in the neighborhood. For me, as an artist, it's really important to honor the intrinsic life of this location. Shh. Everyone thinks we do just big, big, big stuff, and that's not totally true. I do small stuff, too. One of the aspects of puppet theater that I am continually in awe of is the life that they take on as soon as you touch them, so that you are the conduit of this living energy. So in a way, I always think that as a puppet starts out inanimate and then is lifted to life and carries through its, its story in the performance and then is laid back again at the end, and it becomes without its breath. In a sense, it's living the story of each of us that rises to our own life and eventually lays down again into some other place. I hope that the, this corner that is in the heart of the beast can continue to be a lighthouse, that there is a flourishing of many different arts here in this community. I 
sometimes think that people have an aversion to abstract art because it seems dispassionate to them. It's overly formal. The marks are the meaning, and if you can express what you are trying to say without illustration, and just having marks and proportions of color and shape and weight and line and space, I think you appeal to a more primal place in people. Who ever said that the tags in museums were sent down by God? It's all interpretation. I always say I'm a stripe painter because you could call it whatever you want. People will say, you know, the stripe painter. So uh, I do stripe paintings. I would differentiate them from the, the great history of stripe painters before me. Uh, that it's not hard-edged, it's more organic. It stops and starts and gets lost and comes back. And there's a struggle between surface and deep space in these that you wouldn't find in, say, Bridget Riley's work. A big part of the interest for this work is that it plays not only with surface quality and deep space, but it also plays with sort of chaos and organization. I've ruined all the ends of these brushes, so now I'm using the other end just to mix paint. Oil paint is sexy. There's no getting around that. It feels great to move around. It has the quality of taking on different personalities. It's luscious. It's the color of it, the texture, the creaminess of it. I can't really imagine working with anything else. You know, they don't have to go top to bottom. They have more of a motion feeling when they're not side to side. I've always loved art, but I did not conceive of that as something to go into as a vocation. I never believed that a woman from the Midwest, from a small town, could be an artist. I always sensed that that was something that happened in New York with men, uh, men like Jackson Pollock. The paintings start with something as simple as, I feel like green today, and that's what, go that's what goes down first. You know, I divide it up with white, and then you look at what green and white look like, and then pretty soon you're thinking, oh, Degas had those great race pictures, and then he had those deep brown and black race horses, and let's try the browns, and, and then you let it sit for a few days, and you come back and you think, wow, it's, it's kind of boring, and you know, you, you, hot pink goes in. You know, it's, it's just like that. It's flying by the seat of your pants. All the paintings are made using gravity to assist me. And I originally had a T-square that would sit on the top of the painting and I'd move it. A friend of mine rigged up this, these roller skate wheels on a T-square and built this track. And uh, now I can move the work up and down. I can add to it and do longer pieces. When I turn it this way, the emphasis is completely changed. The, the excitement's all up at the beginning rather than at the end. And if you were to keep it this way, you'd have to do something because your eye just wants to like go right off the end there. There's nothing to hold you over there. I wouldn't put it past this being interesting as a horizontal too. That's a nice proportion with the small orange and then the, the yellow as sort of a base. I've actually put arrows in two directions on some of these, letting people know, I like it like this, I like it like this, you know? These are, are some prints that I'm working on, monoprints. I was reintroduced to printmaking after starting with it 15, 16 years ago by High Point. I'm using plexiglass and putting marks down on the plexi and scraping and using solvent. They're not finished. Neither of these are finished. It's informing my paintings and vice versa. It gives me something to step away from the canvas for. And I'm not trying to make my paintings on paper. I'm just seeing what happens, doing what I do, and then it's really fun to be an absolute beginner at something. I'm, I'm really excited to see where it goes. I find abstract art very democratic because it doesn't carry imagery that is particular to a socioeconomic group. It has all the basic, it's the bare bones of the things that we live with because we're sort of hardwired to some of these things. You're hardwired to color through 
through generations of being in your culture, red and yellow having very distinct properties of you know, passion, uh, fire, destruction, blue being meditative, uh, quieter, um, also always having a strong relation to sky and water. I think the vertical stripes are very reminiscent of, of doorways, passageways, windows, uh, places that you can see behind. They make sections. If you just look at what's there and allow yourself to feel it, I think you'll have a much easier and more enjoyable time than if you're trying to figure out what it means. job I ever had down at the John Deere plant near the Quad Cities East Moline. Third shift was all they had. Third shift was not that bad. My banded steel and metal work was clean. Point to turn around and show up late for work. But I was proud of the job I did. Proud to take my wages back to Marie. We held on for a while. Marie. Marie. The train.
but not on my time or for Marie of the trailers. I was proud of the job I did. Minnesota Original is made possible by the State Arts and Cultural Heritage Fund and the citizens of Minnesota. Minnesota.